Welcome. Thank you all uh, for making the time today. Um, welcome to Level 39. For those of you who haven't been here, um, it's a terrific innovation space for financial services technology. Um, Deso Systems is one of the founding partners of Level 39. And uh, recently we finished a, uh, a FinTech challenge uh, with six startups that were finalists uh, in a six weeks intensive program. Um, so for us, Deso Systems is famous for many things. We invented CAD. Um, we have very much, uh, as a company, um, taken collaboration as a, as a key driver to many, many industries. And what we are doing today um, is bringing all of those technologies and learnings into the financial services sector and very much in particular into uh, the funds management arena. Collaboration is a very important topic. Um, if you look at really the three legs of a stool around collaboration, there's three important things. There's the people, there's the process, and the enabling technology. And if you look at some of the largest companies who are most famous for Lean and Six Sigma, really for collaboration, think about companies like Toyota and GE. They're two of our largest customers. We have been the enabling force behind those companies being as successful as they are. Uh, I'm not a technical guy. I'm not a, a guy who knows anything about aeroplanes, which Desso is famous for. I used to be a fund manager. Um, many of my team come from a similar background. And what we're doing at Desso Systems is taking um, a lot of well-tried and true technology and introducing that into um, your world and we've been privileged enough to work with Amin, um, who's been able to collaborate with many of you in both the research and the one-on-one -on -one interviews. And what's been very clear from that is that you all feel that collaboration and many other things are important to you. So we're here today to share a lot of that research. And with pleasure, I, I want to invite Massimo Tosato uh, to introduce Amin and, and to introduce the topic today. So thank you all for being here and I hope this is uh, enlightening and useful for you. Thank you. Good evening to you all. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll have a short presentation and I will then be followed by Amin, which will present the research which take a very different approach and thinking from our traditional way. And he will give you some interesting insight of how the industry could be and should be ra thinking rather than it is thinking. That will be then followed by a panel discussion. And the panel discussion, I would invite all of you to participate and join in with your question. I see some people with a lot of knowledge. Bruce is one of these. I really would like you to stand up, raise your hands, and challenge us. Because in the panel, we'll have uh, uh, four people that, have, uh, that are very experienced and their work day to day is to think about the same concept that I mean we'll be discussing. We'll have Michael Kells, Head of Product Development from UBS. He is a fierce competitor, especially a fierce competitor on our own UBS channel distribution. And I'm very keen to learn from you what you're doing so well in product development in Switzerland. I'm also very keen to learn from Giabattista Chiarelli because he works with Pictet. And Pictet has done very well, especially in some product area and in some parts of the world. One of which is Japan, where they really made it big in the last 10 years there. We then have Nick Spencer, who has a very interesting role, because when we speak about industry at a turning point, one of the turning point is the changing role of consultant. And actu Russell actually was probably the first one to change their role and move into implemented consulting. Uh, they are the one that started to put next to advice also the proper implementation of asset allocation, manager selection, fund selection, due diligence, and portfolio construction in aggregate. So they are at the same time a major gatekeeper for an asset manager and a competitor in the institutional space. And then we have Kevin Pleiter, you have just uh, listened to his initial words and welcome. We thank you for hosting us today. And I have to say that while in my ignorance, I always fought and associated assault to jet fighters and similars, uh, he is uh, actually introducing us to the technology side that is very relevant to development of efficiencies in asset management. 
And efficiencies is one of the key issues that is being developed by Amin, and actually is one of the key issues that I've been started to talk in my own company in the last eight or nine months. So all of these uh, participants tie up together, but the liveness of the debate can happen only if you in the room participate and come in into it in the discussion. I mean, and I have been knowing each other for about 15 years. I think we met in a, a conference in continental Europe in 98 or 99, when uh, uh, we were introducing open architecture as a major innovation in the European industry. We didn't call it that way. We call it just third party distribution. We didn't conceptualize, but I think when the conceptualization came later and it sounded much more interesting than we thought at the time. Um, the industry has developed worldwide, it clearly is around uh, or above $60 trillion uh, across the world. Uh, it's at a similar level or higher than it was before the crisis. And it has, however, been changing very quickly, mainly due to the development of the new regulatory framework that is uh, redesigning the uh, landscape on which we operate and have to operate. And so in our processes, in our product development, in the rule uh, that we behave both at an institutional and at uh, an intermediary level, the uh, regulatory framework is pushing for change. Now we then, in addition to that, we also have all the uh, secular changes that all of you that are in the industry have been familiar for many years, the demographic driven one, the uh, price competition, uh, all those aspects that we had to cope every day in our life. And that has already changed significantly our companies. If I start from my own and I have to think about ourselves, 13, 14 years ago when Amin and I met, our company was a UK mainly, 70% of a business, institutional mainly, 70% of a business, equity mainly, company, 70% of a business, 70, 70, 70. Today is a totally different company because the one aspect that we thought uh, right at the time uh, from a strategic point of view was the uh, coming individualization of savings. And for that reason, we built the intermediary market and that's why intermediary market today are 60% of our revenues. Institutional is 40%. So it's reversed from before. We thought about the emergence of Asia and the demographic trends that would have driven the changes in the industry. And we started to expand our existing presence in Asia and other emerging markets. Today, Schroeder is 70% international, 30% domestic. Again, the opposite of what it was 13 years ago. And equity is still the relevant part, uh, most relevant part of our revenues, but meanwhile we built in multi-assets, fixed income <coughs> and alternatives. And I want to mention multi-assets because this has been uh, a uh, key part of our pro development analysis, trying to think out of the box and seeing not what, as we traditionally have done, we thought the clients <coughs> wanted, but asking them what they wanted. And I think we've done a good job. I have to say so because the past current and present head of pro development and show that I hear in the room. So I really need that they've done a fantastic job. Otherwise, they will be very upset with me for the rest of the day. But it is true. We really uh, got from focus group, working with our distributor, working with our institutional partner, we really got early the message that uh, solution and outcome were becoming a key part uh, of our business back around 2004, 2005, 2006. And that is taking different forms. It's about LDI, asset liability matching and institutional, uh, taking the form of income or uh, manager relationship between risk and return for the individuals. But that's when we started to build and adapt. So. Uh, innovation and how the product development work in different companies is a key subject of the research. Efficiency is becoming, a, and it's probably the tomorrow key subject and the hot topic, because uh, I certainly see uh, pricing pressure coming on board. The pricing pressure is probably led more in the intermediary sector because the 
uh, global clearing prices for the institutional market has already been settling down when the uh, competition from passive came on board back around uh, uh, 2000 and 2005. But that pricing pressure in intermediate is going to uh, challenge the margins, many outside of the United States, uh, due to the consolidation of the distributor, the transparency driven by new rules like RDR. And we welcome all this, but we'll have to learn with uh, lower margin. That means that we have to find if industrial efficiencies in our business. And we are very inexperienced in industrial efficiency in our industry. Let me think, for example, of uh, our focus. Our focus has always been around talent. This is a people business. If you have a top talent, that works well. Actually, that's not always the case. There has been a very interesting study uh, done by Harvard University professor recently, and he wrote a book called The Myth of Talent, uh, Why Talent Portability Doesn't Work. And he explained why the ecosystem is, in some cases, much more relevant than the superior individual capability. The brand of a company, the technology in the system that you find in the company, the people you work with, how much they challenge you, how much they stimulate you, the power of their distribution and sales force, the power of a brand. So the ecosystem is a very element, important element of it. So how, going forward, we think more about how we put all the factors of production into, together and work efficiently in an industrialized way, how much can we learn from the industrial companies that have done so already for the past 30 years. And Amin is going to speak to us about this, all of this. So um, there was a final point that I think you're going to touch on, and that is the industry growth that has led to diminishing returns. And um, I think that's not just due to margin, but uh, it's also due to the increasing cost. Part is increasing cost driven by regulation, and part is by increasing complexity of our world, sophistication of products, uh, segmentation of distribution channel. And so we really need to think about uh, how to achieve better scale, scale in product and in wraps. Think about wraps still today, an American mutual fund is five to six times larger on average than European mutual funds that drive a completely different set of underlying economics. So, I mean, over to you and let's listen to your finding. Thank you.